Say what you want about default GNOME's lack of customizability, but what you can say is that because that exists, it has prodded the community to come up with ways to make GNOME better. And perhaps that's the best thing about GNOME is that it, it spawns innovation amongst developers who are interested in using that desktop environment. So today what we're going to do is take a look at a very early version of an application that allows you to mess around with GDM. Now if you don't know what GDM is, GDM is basically the display manager or the login manager for GNOME. That is the first screen you come to when you boot up your computer. It's the thing that you enter your password into and then it gets you into GNOME itself. For the most part, if you just use stock GNOME, this is completely uncustomizable. It's going to be whatever it is the way it is. It's just the way it always has been. Uh, if you've wanted to edit it before, you'd have to download something called GNOME Tweaks, and that would allow you to set the wallpaper. That's basically all GNOME Tweaks would let you do for the display manager. But now there is a new application called GDM Settings. And what this application does is it allows you to edit several different settings for the display manager, your login manager. So let's go ahead and take a look at GDM settings. So here we are on a fresh install of Endeavor OS. Now the reason why I've chosen Endeavor is simply because it's an Arch-based distro and it seems that the only distribution that GDM settings has been packaged for is Arch. Now you can go and install this on your system if you don't use Arch, you just have to build it manually. But I wanted to take the, e the easy way out, so I used an Arch-based distro. So in order to install GDM settings, you'd open up a terminal, and you'd have to have a AUR helper in order to do this. Endeavor has yay installed by default. So you would do yay-s, and then gdm-settings, and then hit enter. You'd, you'd hit yes, and then you'd hit n for no, n for no again, and enter your password then, I guess. And then... Y for yes, and they would install it. Now, there is one dependency that it may not install on its own. If it tells you that it can't find this dependency, just copy that name and do yay dash capital S that name, and it should install that, and then you can go through and do GDM settings. That's what I had to do, but it's not a big deal. It's just that one setting. It is in the AUR. Why it doesn't install it as a dependency, I'm not sure. But once you have it installed, we can close the terminal, go to the launcher here, and type in GDM settings. And it's actually going to come up with come up as login manager settings. So here's what this application looks like. If it, you've ever used GNOME tweaks before, you'll know that this looks fairly familiar. But here's what it does. So it allows you to tweak the appearance. So you can change the shell, icon, and cursor themes for the display manager. You can also change the background to an image or a color. So if you choose image, it would allow you to choose a uh, uh, like a wallpaper or something. If you choose color, it'll allow you to change to several different colors, including custom colors because it has a whole picker here. So whether you choose a background or a color is up to you. It allows you to change the fonts for the login manager. It will, has access to all the fonts that you have installed on the system. You can choose to have anti-aliasing in, uh, enabled or hinting enabled to full or disabled. Uh, you can have the scaling factor. So if you have a high density screen, so if you're like in 4K or something, you can scale GDM up so that it's not so e either so small or so large, however you need it to look, you can scale it up a little bit. Now I don't have a 4K screen, so I'm not up on the lingo, but that's a good thing for people who do have high density displays. You can also change the top bar to do certain things. So you can change the text color, the background color, disable the arrows and so on and so forth. You can also change the output of the clock. So it will show the weekday in seconds or change from the 24 hour clock to regular AM PM. You can also change, show the battery percentage. It has a sound. Now I didn't even know that GDM played sounds. I hardly ever have my headphones on when the login manager pops up, but you can change the sounds that GDM plays apparently through this panel here. If you have a t uh, laptop and have a touchpad, you can change certain functionality of the touchpad for the login manager. And here's a really cool thing for those people who use a night light like applications. So things like coffee or Redshift or whatever those things are called that remove blue light from the screen. You can now enable that for the login manager as well. So you're not blinded when you open up your laptop lid. And then there are several miscellaneous features that are actually really cool. So you can enter a login message. So you can say, hello, Matt. 
and you can enable a logo. So if you want to, if you have a logo, you can, you know, upload a logo and it will show you a logo on the screen. We can turn that off and uh, we can also disable the restart buttons and disable, disable the user list. So all those features, really cool and completely impossible to change, at least as far as I'm aware, without really some major tinkering without this application. So let's go ahead and actually change some things here. So let's change the default shell to arc dark, the icons to paper and the cursor to paper. We will, let's find a, a wallpaper here that we can use. Okay, I've now found, found a picture that I can use. So I just choose image, choose file, and then I save that in pictures, save that right here, select, and then we'll change the fonts to uh, Noto something or the other. We'll just do see, some kind of mono font. So let's see here. Let's just choose Noto Sans Mono Regular and we'll make the font 13 or 14. We'll click select. Uh, we'll leave all this stuff the same. The bar will change, make sure the time is AM, PM. We'll leave the rest of this the same, we'll be fine. Actually, I wonder if it'll allow you to change this to like transparent, that'd be cool, but no. We'll change it to white, and then the, the text color would then have to be black. Hit select. It's gonna look weird, but who cares? Oh, wait a minute, I did that the wrong way. That, that was dumb, Matt. We wanted that to be white, then we needed to... I actually need to learn how to read, so let's we'll, we'll change the background color to white, the text color to black, and we'll see how that looks. Okay, and then I'm not gonna mess around with the sound. We don't have a touchpad. I don't care about nightlight. And then we'll just make sure that this has a welcome message. We'll hit apply. It's gonna ask for a password. And then we can close this. Now we're gonna log out and see what it looks like. Log out, log out. Here we go. See if this, oh, it actually worked. So that is what GDM settings actually does. We have the wallpaper now. Ignore the odd aspect ratio slash whatever. Uh, that's just because I'm in a VM. I wish that the GDM settings allowed you to change the display resolution, which is the word I was looking at before, uh, but it doesn't. Unfortunately, I don't see the welcome message, but it's possible that it's off screen. I guess it doesn't really matter, but that's a little disappointing. I guess it's possible that it's off screen, but that's still, that's really cool, right? You can go through and do a lot of changes with this. And I'm assuming, like I said, that the stuff that I changed is off screen because I don't see the clock here as well. Oh, there's the clock. Oh, wait a minute. I bet you the welcome message is up there somewhere. I just changed the, let's go back to here and we'll actually change that, the, the bar color to something different because chances are the reason why I was having problems there was because the background color of the bar was funky. So we'll hit apply, enter the password again, and now we'll log out. Oh, look at that, it changed the bar. Interesting, it changed the bar color up here as well. That's, uh, hmm, I wonder why it changed it system-wide instead of just in the, the login manager. We'll just go ahead and log out here. I guess it doesn't really matter, but that's something to keep in mind. Uh, you also have to, I should should have mentioned this in uh, to, to begin with, but this is alpha software. It's very much an early development. So just know that it may crash and it may have features that don't work. For example, the, the welcome message doesn't seem to be here unless it's off in the corner somewhere and we just can't see it. But it did go, it did change the time so that it's actually a.m. p.m. That's really cool, right? So that is GDM settings. I'm not a big GNOME user. Everybody pretty much knows this if you've watched the channel for any amount of time. If you haven't watched the channel for any amount of time, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I do a lot of crazy things, so maybe you'll like some of my future videos. But everybody knows that I'm not a big GNOME you know, user. I'm much more of a tiling window manager guy. But I do enjoy the fact that because GNOME is so locked down, it has spurred other developers to develop applications that expand GNOME's functionality. They have created extensions, they've created other applications that just tweak the settings that the GNOME folks don't actually want you to be able to tweak. And that's what GDM settings is going to be able to do once it's been developed a little bit further. I would say that there are some things here that are just not working yet. It's possible that it's just because it's a virtual machine, but it does state on their GitHub page that this is alpha software, so some things just might not be there yet. So that's really cool. If you will use GNOME, I'd highly recommend giving this a try out. So that is it for this video. If you have comments about this, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. 
Sid A, Devon, Patrick L, Meglin, Jackson, Knife and Tool, Steve A, Cyberger, Linux, Garrick, Samuel, Mitchell, Art Center, Carbon Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin, e, Andy, Merrick, Camp, Joshua, e, J Dog, Peter A, Crucible, Dark, Benedict, Vlad, and Primus. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.